Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. In my work as a futurist, I often try and link together two apparently unrelated developments. This is also what I'm going to do in this video, as I explain how 3D printing could help us cope with the challenge of peak oil. <music> 3D printing refers to a range of technologies that build objects in layers by solidifying liquids, bonding powders, or depositing molten materials such as thermoplastics. Peak oil refers to the pending moment when global oil production will reach its maximum and after which demand for oil will start to exceed supply. Many believe that peak oil will occur before 2020. So just how may 3D printing help us cope with a world with less oil? For a start, because 3D printing is additive rather than subtractive, it will allow us to consume and transport far fewer raw materials. Many companies have already recognised this potential, with Rolls-Royce leading a project called Merlin that hopes to save materials by using 3D printing in the manufacture of civil aircraft engines. And talking of aircraft, an initiative called the Saving Project is using 3D printing to reduce the weight of aircraft components. Already, just by 3D printing lighter seat buckles, the project has demonstrated that 3.3 million litres of aviation fuel could be saved in the life of the average airliner. More radically, 3D printing will allow things to be produced more locally. Today, most manufactured goods are transported long distances and contain components made in many locations. Almost everything we buy therefore burns a significant quantity of oil in transportation. However, 3D printing could help change this by allowing objects to be transported digitally over the internet and then printed out in local stores or even at home. Of course, 3D printers do themselves consume raw materials and at present these are often oil-based resins or plastics. This said, many 3D printers are already capable of producing objects out of a bioplastic such as polylactic acid or PLA. Recent developments in synthetic biology also mean that, within a few years, it will be possible to ferment bioplastics directly from corn, sugar beet or algae. By the time peak oil arrives, we may therefore be growing local 3D printing supplies. As another alternative, it may soon be possible for 3D printers to manufacture new objects from household waste. For example, a project called Philobot is working to create a system that will grind up waste plastics and turn them into 3D printing filament. Once again, increasingly precious oil will be saved. The final way in which 3D printing will help us cope with peak oil will be by facilitating increased product repair. Today, when just one part of something breaks, we usually throw the entire item away. This is incredibly wasteful and, in a peak oil world of reduced resources and diminished transportation, will simply not be an option. One of the great promises of 3D printing is not just a local manufacturer of final products, but the local printout of spare parts. In theory, with a 3D printer available, almost any broken item will be able to be repaired. 3D printing will therefore help to reduce the number of nearly functional objects that are consigned to landfill. 3D printing is just one of many technologies that we need to develop in order to rise to the challenge of peak oil. To learn more, why not visit explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.